about the first time we, you know, when Wendy called me and uh, she said, uh, I need a favor. I can't ever tell Wendy you no. I mean, ever. And I said, yeah, sure, Wendy, what do you need? And she said, I don't know. You may tell me no this time. I need a speaker for Saturday. TVC. And I was like, I laughed, of course. I'm like, you know, nobody's going to come. And then I figured I'd have all seven of my friends here. I think they're here. I directed my assistants to come and got my boys with me. And then I remember there's a lot of basketball junkies in this state. I remember sitting out there many times getting some of the best stuff I ever got. Um, sitting right out here on Saturday. So uh, I told her I'd do it and then hung the phone up and I, I checked the people speaking today and suddenly it turned into like this Sesame Street thing, you know, which of these things is not like the other. I mean, Coach, uh, <laughs> Coach Copley lost 11 games in the last four years. We lost 10 this year, you know. Um, Coach, Coach Hurley, are you kidding me? I could do 45 minutes on drills I stole from that man. You know, I think, what's he won, about 3,000 games and 40 state titles. I think he has like 52 guys that's played in the NBA. You know, Jeff Walls, he's only played in two national title games in the last five or six years. And, and then there's Coach Huggins. Well, I, uh, my dad is from West Virginia, and all his people still live in West Virginia. So I was talking to my dad. And, I, was, I call him about every day. He's getting older, you know. And uh, so I, I told him I was going to speak. Well, who else is going to be there? Man, I got to Coach Huggins, and, and the conversation just stopped. Oh, my God, Coach Huggins, you know, go have beers with him. I think he likes to drink. So do you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, don't, I said, Dad, I don't think it's really going to come to that. But if it does, yeah, I'll go have beers with Coach Huggins. you kidding me? Um, but then within an hour after that phone call, I'm hearing from cousins from West Virginia, I ain't talked to him in 20 years, talking about, man, say hi to Coach Huggins. Tell him if he ever comes to Beckley, you know, I whacked some moonshine for him. I'm like, wait a minute now. <laughs> Coach Huggins has won about 700 games and been to Final Fours, you know. You don't just sit around and drink all the time. Get off him, you know. And then, of course, there's, you know, Shaka is just, just amazing. So, um, you know, it's quite an honor to just be here, period, and then to be on this um, lineup. So, as Wendy said, I'll just to give you a little bit about my background. I grew up in Western Maryland and fell in love with the game of basketball at age seven. And it's been a 45 year love affair. That's all I can tell you. I'm, I'm a junkie. Um, probably watch more basketball than anybody I know, anyhow. And uh, so, my first experience coaching was in the sixth grade. And ironically, it was coaching girls. We had a field day. And some of the girls wanted to have a team. And I didn't do it really necessarily out of love of coaching. And I did it, you know, because there was a girl, of course, that I was trying to get the attention of. And uh, they finished third. It was kind of cool. And then when I was in high school, I coached my church league team. And then from there, I went in the Air Force, playing on stand for four years. Turns out I loved it, stayed for 21. And in the Air Force, I coached all over the world, anything from little kids to grown men co-ed teams, on base, off base, all kinds of stuff. And then I caught a really good break in 1998. Um, I had an AAU program here in town. And when I got here in 1994, I went and registered with the AAU. And I was the third girls team registered with the a with AAU. Now, people from San Antonio, all these years later, now there's probably 50 teams. But that's where we were in girls basketball in San Antonio in 1994, okay? So, through the process of this AAU team, I caught a break. I got the head uh, girls basketball job in Carnivore High School. And when they called me, I was like, I was like, I, don't, I haven't even finished my degree yet. I'm active duty Air Force. And this is how naive to the whole thing I was. They said, well, it's private school. You don't have to teach. I went, Freak. I'm like, that's the best gig ever. And so I was there for five years. The Air Force sent me away for my last year. And when I came back, I was fortunate enough to get the uh, Southwest job in uh, San Antonio. So uh, that's kind of who I am and, and, and where I came from. A couple of quick things about um, this presentation. Um, you know, so I thought to myself, well, wow, what, what is it I could possibly have to share um, with these people? And um, when I got to thinking about it, um, I've been head coach for 16 years, 
and I've been blessed to have five 2,000 plus scores in, in my career. Um, two boasts and three guards. Um, and so when I got to um, Southwest, my first team there was really good. You ever hear of a young lady named Destiny Hooker? She might be the best volleyball player in the world right now. Um, had her for a year and had a bunch of good kids go with them, won a bunch of games, got pretty deep in the playoffs, and then they all graduated. So I realized that the kids I had in my program, a lot of them were not talented enough to go out and play for these select teams and, pay, and, and have personal trainers. And, uh, and even if they were, we're a Title I school on the southwest side of San Antonio. They didn't have the money to do that. So we had to develop um, a system this year round um, to teach these kids how to, how to score the ball. Because, you know, we work a lot on defense, don't misunderstand me, but that basketball needs to go through the orange thing before the people will give you points on the board, you know. And we had a hard problem with that. So this is how we try to structure what we do. Um, we have open gym in the mornings. And at open gym, our kids come in and we, 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 we get them to lift a little bit of weights. And they don't go out and play games. They grab a shot chart. And they go out and they get their shots in. And then, you know, during the period, we're doing a lot of just team, team things. So obviously when the season starts, the open gym goes away. We practice in the morning. And we work pretty much exclusively on defense in the morning. And then during our athletic period, we shoot, shoot, and shoot, which you know, Coach Hurley mentioned yesterday. So hopefully explaining that a little bit will make sense of what we're going to do. Some of the stuff I'm going to show you, um, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you all the kids in our program do it. But all the kids that want to become good, they're going to do these things. So if you were to walk in our gym in the mornings, we're going to have anywhere from six to ten kids, sometimes more than that, out there, <coughs> partner, partner shooting, uh, doing these shot charts. Okay, so that's kind of the the basis of what I'm going to try to talk about today. So we'll talk about some of the off-season shooting program we have, um, some of the in-season scoring drills. I'm sorry, this is the military guy. You know, military briefing. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, tell you, and then I'll tell you what I told you. Um, uh, Off-season shooting program, talk briefly about some of the things we do in the summer, um, some of the sets we use to, to get some scores, some shots. And then if you do have those great shoot shooters, you're going, to, you're going to see some jump. You're going to see some jump defense. So talk a little bit about that. So one of the things that we try to do, and this was a big change for us about six years ago, um, we had a really good guard and a 6-1 post. And as always happens in high school, they graduated. And so we're sitting there, and uh, Coach Henry over here used to be my assistant. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. This is Coach Duvall. He's one of my assistants. Coach White, you here? But I will respect her evaluation. My other assistant's not here. How's that work? Um, anyway, so Coach Henry and I, we're sitting on my back porch. Our biggest kid's 5'5". Five five. And we're like, how in the hell are we going to win a game next year? So we decided we're going to speed it up. We decided we're going to speed this thing up. And, uh, and so... I made him promise me, if you're going to do that, you've got to do a lot of things. You've got to get a lot of shots up. You've got to figure out ways to score. And I was an old shot selection kind of guy. And if you're going to play like this, you're going to see some god-awful looking shots sometimes um, in, in the system. But we try to play fast, and we try to get 72 shots up. And the only way you're ever going to get close to that is you've got to pound the offensive board. So offensive boards is a big deal um, for us. And then we shoot, and we shoot, and then when we get tired of shooting, we shoot some more. Because, um, you know, we, we got to get the ball in the basket. Now, um, as I mentioned, we do our weights in, in open gym in the morning, and you'll know, listen to Coach Hurley yesterday, 
Man, I was so jealous talking about Sunday practices. I don't know about y'all, but Sunday practices would be the greatest thing for me. I would love that, but um, we're not allowed to do that. So we have to get a lot of stuff done that we have to trust our kids to go do it. Because, I mean, everybody knows the rule. If those kids don't show up at open gym, it's eventually going to cost them because they're not going to be better than the other kids. But there's nothing you can really do to them if they don't show up and do it. I mean, there really isn't. So here's a, I'll show you one of these, and if you want to see any more, um, these are kind of our guard shot, shot, shot charts. And we run these in six to eight week um, intervals. And, and so a week, a week one shot chart for us at Open Gym might look like something like this. Um, and of course, you have to spend time teaching these kids all the, uh, all the shots before you ask them to go in. And by the time our kids get to varsity, um, they know these. So we'll start out with something close to the basket, you know, that fence drill, just spin it out, shoot it. We'll go elbow to elbow. And then uh, we shoot threes. Those line threes, um, does everybody know what those are? Anybody not know what the line threes, what I mean by that? If you're shooting in the corner, you're sprinting back and you're touching something, you're sprinting up, you're catching and shoot every shot. Um, same thing, half, if you're top of the key, you're sprinting half court, you're coming back and getting it. If you're on the wings, you're just, there's something out there you're telling them to sprint to, touch, and come up and get it. Um, screen shooting, straight up stole that from Rick Patino. Um, and even though probably my four biggest influences in coaching are Coach K, Coach Hurley, um, Don Meyer, and uh, Dean Smith, who was the reason I wanted to coach basketball in the first place, growing up on the East Coast. Um, Patino, um, I, got, I got a disc, and he, and he said something in that disc, and he talked about going out and recruiting kids and how they brag about, yeah, I was in the gym playing for four hours yesterday. And he said, he just tells every one of them, you know what I'd rather you do? Go to the gym and work real hard on, on, on skills and stuff for about 45 minutes to an hour. That's how you're going to get better. But he also defines discipline as an organized plan of attack. And so these shot charts that we developed, are, that's what I was trying to do. I wanted to organize an effective way for our girls to go in and get their shooting done. Um, and hopefully this worked. But the screen shooting, you know, a lot of different screens. We just put a chair down there and they'll curl around it, pass, they'll do the shots rotate and go that way and as you can see once they get a little winded I like to work some free throws in and so this is what we would ask them to do on Mondays and Wednesdays and then on Tuesdays and Thursdays we would ask them to do this this would be for our guards um, and one of the things we really like is our dribble attack series because if you're going to shoot the ball from, from distance, then you also better be able to go off the bounce. Because, you know, where we sometimes get in trouble is, um, in fact, in the playoff games, Coach Brewer was sitting back there, and the team did a great job defensively. They, they hard hedged our ball screens. We backed it up, hit the trailer in the pocket, I'm sorry, hit the roller in the pocket or late, and we just missed shots. But they also ran us off the three point line, and we didn't do as good a job this year of attacking the basket um, off that. But this dribble attack is one that we really like. Um, got some moves there, some stutter step between, uh, lot pull up jumpers, layups. Um, and we, you know, everybody, you know, you want to get your guards in the paint. In the paint. Because once they get in the paint, they can make plays. They can make plays, they can make shots. Um, I think there's a little bit more on this. Now, if you take a look down here at this one, I'm really glad I got a fellow East Coast person with me. Um, you know, here in Texas, we like to call a shake dribble an inside-out dribble. But if you grew up on the East Coast, uh, Coach Hurley, is this correct? That's a shake dribble. And I don't know if Coach Hastings is here. And she used to be one of my assistants, and she used to just argue with me about that all day. 
that's an inside out dribble. No, it's not shake, dribble, shut up. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, that's what we would ask week one, open gym. And again, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you everybody's coming in doing it, but the, but the girls who want to be players are doing this. Okay? Do you want to see another one of those, or you kind of get the gist? Huh? Week six? Okay. Now, at the end, I'm going to give you my information, and if you want any of these, I'll, I'll be, it's as easy as an email, I'll email them to you, and if nothing else, it's kind of organized, <coughs> and you may substitute to sections, you may change up moves, whatever, but uh, this, this helps. This helps, especially when you have, you know, that team that, I mean, there's just, you know, like I say, we work real hard, and you know, Southwest High School is was is not really was never really a basketball school. Uh, the guy who had the coaching record at our school coached there for 20 years. For four years, he coached the girls and the boys, and he won 202 games. And so, um, in the middle, at the beginning of my ninth year, I went over that. And we've had three three years we didn't make the playoffs. You know. So it's a constant rebuild, rebuild, you know. And, you know, hopefully there's some of you out there that, you know, might find yourself in that situation because the truth is that's where the majority of us are most of the time. I mean, if, if you have those teams that are constantly getting to the regional tournament, the state tournament, don't ever leave those jobs. You're doing it right, and you've got great kids, okay. But, you know, when you have kids that, in some cases, don't know where their next meal's coming from, that are finding a hard time to get to the gym, but they want to be the best they can be and get those great life lessons that you can get from playing basketball, um, you know, you have to, to help them. So this was going to be what we did last week. You know, we'll start again. We're going to start close to the basket and work out a little bit. X outs. Um, around the world, we never go past the paint. And we try to have them bank those, those uh, first couple shots, and then we'll go elbow to elbow a little bit, shoot some free throws, and then we'll work on our catch, turn, and face series. Um, I don't, you know, um, we don't, when we catch, turn, and face, we do L cuts, we don't do V cuts, because we're going to use V cuts when we use the screen, and we have the screen shooting for that. So they're making V cuts off of the screen shooting, so on this catch, turn, and face, we're making a good L cut. And again, we're all, I'm old school, so we're, we're still working on that inside foot pivot um, uh, kind of thing. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're going to turn that catch, turn, and face to the other side of the court. Because again, you know, with the weight program that we have and then getting the shooting done, and there, there is such a thing as first period, you know, unfortunately. Um, you know, they got to get off to, to school. So we got like an hour, maybe an hour and ten minutes to get the weights done and all the shooting done. Um, but that also turns it into a little bit of a conditioning exercise because, you know, it's a good amount of shots in a short period of time, but they can usually get them off. Okay? Um, I'll show you a, do the same thing. I'll show you one of our, our post charts. Um, where are they at? Oh, wait a minute. Hold it. It'd be a hell of a lot easier to do it this way. All that preparation. Yeah. So, this might be what our, our week one post chart would look like. Um, Again, just close to the basket, get warmed up. Then we'll go back to the basket, those power pickups, just the, where you put the two balls down, and they're going side to side. Um, have a variety of shots, shoot some free throws, and then we'll work on the trailer shots. Um, get some trailer shots in, and then we'll go.
to our short corner attack, and then our rip series, which, um, you know, if, if you were there for Coach Hurley yesterday, he had the drill where everybody was flashing to the high post and catching it, and then they were doing a series of moves. That's basically what the rip series is. Um, and so we go through, you know, a variety of those moves. And posts should be able to get more shots up anyway because most of their shots are closer. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'll, we'll put some emphasis on that short corner attack again. We'll work, work on hook shots, those little baby hooks coming across the middle um, and ended up with rib series. And so that would be what we'd ask them to do Monday through Thursday. We usually give them Friday off. Some, some years we have girls that are really, really dedicated. And they're like, well, can we come in on Friday? Of course we can come in on Friday. Um, but uh, so I'll come in and, and they'll do it. Now that's in the fall. In the spring, Fridays are mandatory because that's when we do our shooting competitions. We do our shot charts Monday through Thursday. And then they'll have, we have a big man challenge and a guard challenge that we do um, when we keep the, the numbers and all that stuff. Okay. So do you want to see another post chart? Shot chart or is that good? All right, so those shot charts are valuable to us, um, not just in the fall off season, we use them in the spring off season, and it's part of our summer shooting program as well. Now, I have up there cross training, and this isn't really applicable to everybody, but you know, we have a, a three, a three player force right now, it's about five nine, and against a lot of teams we can post her up. So we run some stuff to get her posted, but I can't ask her to post up and not do a little bit of post work. So with certain kids, you may cross train them. You may tell them, okay, on Mondays and Wednesdays, I want you to do this guard work, and then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I want you to go do the post work, okay? That doesn't happen very often for us, because in 11 years, you know, I mean, I thought I had went to heaven when I got there, and I had the most athletic six-foot-four girl <coughs> on planet Earth. Um, and then after that, I've had one six-footer since then. So Now, those are shooting drills, and, and you know, I think uh, Coach Cheskin, you know, Coach K talks a lot about there's a huge difference between shooting drills and scoring drills. And remember, we're trying to get 72 shots a game. Okay? And, you know, you know how you come to clinics and you usually pick up a couple little things here and there? Well, Coach uh, Copley, man, I wish I'd have known about that coach me before I did this because, you know, I'm a little old school. and So most of this stuff is going to be in, uh, in Microsoft Word. So the first thing we do, everybody does this, is... We call our 100 shot drill layups. You have your three lines, and it's just side, center, side. You get up to the scoring zone, and we want, and that middle line is going to be our post, and we want them to make that good hard cut to get the layup. Okay? To get the layup. Now, Coach Bittison right here, who used to be one of my assistants, he suggested this. So the, the two wing players that get layups. A lot of times you'll just have them go straight to the basket, get the ball, and get the layup and cross them. It forces them to make a good cut, and it makes that layup more game speed. Okay? So they receive the pass from the, from the line, then the person in the middle gets the ball out of the net, and they're going to go back the other end with the two passers. With the two passers. All right? Simple drill. Everybody does it. I don't think everybody crosses their guards like that. I don't know. Um, we think it's more game-like, um, and, and it forces them to make good cuts. But here's where I think we, this helps us. We're trying to play with a lot of pace. So that's a three-minute drill. Two years ago, I had a team that could do this drill in 245. Now, if you're going to do it at 3 minutes, 2.45, especially girls, boys, if you do this, you have to play with the time. It's probably less. It is, each layup counts as one, so a coach or a manager is just sitting there, 
and every time the ball goes through the basket, if they make all three, we give them a bonus point. Okay? So they have to play with a lot of pace. Um, and then whatever they're short, they run. We, like uh, Coach Copley was saying, we don't, here's the two times that we run in touch lines. If we have to make 100 and they make 85, they're running 15. That's, we figured it out, a suicide is the equivalent of five trips, so that would be three suicides. They didn't make the drill, that's not my fault, right? And the other time is when practice is not as intense as I like, sometimes you got to get their attention. But a lot of these drills that we do, and it's just one after the other, they're getting plenty of conditioning in. And then one of my favorites, um, got from Coach Hurley, um, ball sprint relays at the end of practice. Okay? Down and back right hand, down and back left hand, down and back two balls, and here's where it gets really fun, down and back crab run. Do that two or three times at the end of practice instead of five or six suicides, and they're dribbling a the basketball, and they're getting a heck of a lot of conditioning. So we don't run and touch lines a lot unless we don't make the drill. And again, that's not my fault. Make the drill. Or if their attention needs to be gained because of lack of intensity of practice. So we do another one on that 100-shot series. Um, same thing, side, center, side, get down, feed the post. And then we cross them, and they stop with the elbows, and they get the pass, and they shoot elbow jumpers. We usually give them about, I don't know, it sometimes varies, but 330 is usually what we give them. The layup counts one. The elbow jumpers are two each. If they make all of them, if they make all of them, then that's a possible seven-point trip. And again, they have to get to 100, get to 100. Um, so with the amount of time, it's really forcing them to get up and down and then uh, get their footwork right. And you know what else it really helps for? <coughs> Passing the basketball. Because if you're going to do these drills at this kind of pace, and again, the guys coaches, you're probably going to, you know, if you do this kind of stuff, you've got to bump those times down a little bit. If you don't believe in the bonus ball, you know, maybe three minutes is the right time for guys. You just don't give them the bonus point for making all of them. You know, I don't know. Um, but, uh, again, whenever they're short, they're going to run. Um, and, and these are... That's it? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um... Let me see. Okay. Um, so, one of the things that we try to do, and this is going to be real quick. So, there's a bunch of other transition drills we do with the Roy Williams sprint weaves drill three lines, throw it ahead, dribble it down, make a layup, three man weave back, no floor touches, one ball, 30 and three, 30, 30, 30 laps in three minutes. But one of the things we try to do, and this helps us because we've had some really great scores over the year, this helps avoid getting jumped, jump defense, okay? And, and these are our transition cycles. And the first one is, is just your basic Loyola Marymount cycle. We give them 35 seconds to make these trips, okay? One, two, shoot the three. Um, one, two, five. One, two, three. One, three, blowout. And then one, two, four for a walk up. Again, we don't do anything without putting time on them. They got to have time put on them. And then we have another cycle. Well, then it's a reverse cycle. Let's just run it to the left side of the floor. We have another cycle. There's a 48 second cycle. It's a skip pass. We throw it ahead, dribble it up, flatten the defense, skip it. So when we skip it, we'll shoot it, we'll drive it, we'll feed it. And every time we're setting that stagger for, excuse me, we're setting the stagger for our two player, who's usually our shooter. And then we play off of that stagger. And then we have another one. We have uh, skip. Uh, we cross the line on it, and then we have a point guard cycle, okay? 
Now, when do you have time to show one drill? For you, Bill, anything. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, I was going to talk about that. <laughs> um, okay. This one right here is one we really like. We shoot a lot of threes. Out of those 72 shots, we're trying to get 25 to 30 threes. So when we decided to play fast, we studied, you know, of course, Paul Westhead. And Westhead has a drill where he works on that two player getting that shot on the wing. Throw it ahead, sprint up, get it on the elbow. Well, we liked it so much, we decided to turn it into a 20 minute drill. We shoot from the five spots, corners, wings, top, and we shoot four minutes a spot, and we keep it on the board. Every time a shot goes up, the visitor side goes up. Every time one goes in, the home side goes in. And we can track that so we can see where we're shooting it well, not shooting it well from. So you have passer shooters, and then on the wings, you have the passer at the elbow. You switch the passer out every now and then, and then top of the key. And you do it four minutes a spot. And then, you know, those are some other things that, and then that's me. Um, so if, think about that Loyola drill, a lot of coaches have said to me, God, coach, that's a lot of practice time. And my answer is, uh-huh, it is. But if you want to shoot the three, then don't get after your kids if they're not making them and you're not getting the shots up. So if you really think about it, a lot of times at the end of a practice, maybe in an athletic period, you're going to do 20 minutes of positional shooting anyway, a lot of cases. We don't do it every day, but a lot of days we'll do that oil of 20. Um, and it gets a ton of shots up, a ton of shots up. So if there's any of this stuff you're interested in and you want to do like I've done over the years and tweak it and, you know, make it work, for your program, please call me or email me, um, and I'll just I'll email it to you. Um, and uh, I really appreciate your time, and and uh, hopefully something got out of this, and uh, it was an honor. Thank you.